Hi, what if I tell you that enclosure chamber is not essential for big printing? I'm Krzysztof, full name Krzysztof Rozeń. I'm a founder of the New Dimension and I finish macromolecular chemistry. But let's not talk about me, let's talk about OP series. You probably heard or read the phrase you need enclosure chamber to print engineering plastics such as ABS, nylon, polycarbonate. Or better, you need enclosure chamber to print advanced materials such as PI, PIG, PEG. I need to tell you something in the secret. You don't need it. You never need it at all. And today I will tell you why it's better to not enclose your chamber. So let's start it. What the enclosure chamber does? It simply reduces the rate of cooling printed part and only that. Some expensive printers will let you rise the temperature up to 90 degrees, some very expensive, a little bit more. However, you can still experience difficulties in printing semi-crystalline polymer such as PIG, especially in its crystallized form. So my question is, do you need an enclosure chamber to reduce the rate of cooling? Take a look at this fireplace. The heat is transferred from the system with higher temperature by thermal irradiation to my hands, which represented system with lower temperature. There is no enclosure in that system. And think about PIG. You can print it by simply continuously delivering the energy to keep your part warm and cozy. I know it might be a little bit not intuitive, but look, OP printer is not enclosed and allow you to print the same semi-crystalline pack part as amorphous or with rich crystalline content. With OP series, you can forget about ineffective and problematic post-curing process. No more warping and something more important. Ability to adjust properties of the 3D printed part according to the needs. Here you can see the part with alternating amorphous and crystalline region over the Z axis. Do you think it would be possible to print something like that on printer with enclosed chamber? It would be quite challenging process due to the very dull thermal response of such printers. So that is the reason why it's better to not enclose the chamber. Now it's the best part. What if I will tell you that you can turn any printer into high temperature peak printer allowing you to control crystallization process for less than 200 pounds. The infrared heater is placed at the level of the heating block about 50 millimeters above the nozzle. And yes, E3D nozzles and heating blocks can be used for this purpose. By increasing or decreasing the intensity of the AR heater, the temperature of the deposit layer can be adjusted. Infrared heater is supplied by AC Life Power Supply and to control it you need OP Proportional SSR which allow you to control its level by PWM signal. The standard SSRs are zero crossing and are not suitable for this purpose because you can have only three levels 0, 50 and 100 percent. With proportional SSR you can have any level between 0 and 100%. If you would like to have 22%, for example, you can have it. If you would like to have 60%, it's not a problem too. So to turn your printer or any printer into high temperature printer, you need only two components, an OPPWM proportional SSR and 
infrared heater. That's all you need. However, this is minimum. The optimum would be to have two proportional SSRs, one for infrared heater and second for decent bed heater. The board is designed to control 220-240 volts with 50 Hz or 115 with 60 Hz with maximum load 10 amps in case of the static cooling radiator. If you will add active cooling, you can pass more current. You need to know something. This is much more than peak color change. Controlling the temperature during the additive manufacturing with advanced semi-crystalline polymerase adjust peak or peg gives you a control over the mechanical properties, chemical resistance and thermal operating window of 3D printed part. You can print amorphous body with thermal resistance up to 160 degree, better resistance to impact and deformation, or you can print crystalline rich part with heat resistance up to 260 degree, better stress resistance and higher modulus of elasticity. Let's draw stress strain plot to explain that. The tensile properties of the amorphous part will look like this. A part that is fully crystallized at higher temperature will look like that. Same polymer with completely different properties. The amorphous part will have a lower thermal operating window, elastic modulus and stress resistance. Chemical resistance will not be provided. You can also expect the better impact resistance and higher elongation at break. The part printed with a face rich in crystallites will have opposite characteristic. With wide thermal operating window, higher elastic modulus and stress, the resistance against acid bases and solvent will be provided by the crystallite face. However, the resistance to deformation and impact will be lower and some simply sample will be more brittle. And now you can see that between the characteristics of crystalline and amorphous part is a tunable region, which can be adjusted by intensity of the lamp. Moreover, you can assign the intensity of the infrared heater to the layer in your slicer and print with new dimension with tailored properties like never before because printing with semi-crystalline polymer gives you ability to have different properties with same polymer. The OP proportional PWM SSR can be used not only to make high temperature printer, but also for many other DIY projects with variety of programmable electronic boards and shields that can be even powered via SSR terminals 3 and 4 such as Raspberry Pi. Board can control PWM signal in the range of 0 to 5 volt or 0 to 24 volt to control single power motors, conveyor belts, gates, conventional heaters, heating clamps not only in printer but in the sauna or many other applications. You can support this idea on Kickstarter simply by buying OP proportional PWM SSR, OP printer or OP printer kit for self-assembly, supported by video instruction and PDF guide. Finally, let's talk about the specification of the printer. Nozzle temperature up to 450 degree is a hardware limitation. You can go higher, but it doesn't make sense even for peak. I will explain that later. Bed temperature up to 300 degree. Again, this is hardware limitation. You can rise it and melt pick at the building plate if you wish. Auto bed leveling is possible at building plate preheated to 300 degree. Infrared heater gives you ability to melt pick above 60% of PWM signal. You can have something like that. Ugly printed specimen which was melted during the 3D printing process. This shows that the printer is ready to print with more difficult material than pick itself and you get a solution that you can easily maintain yourself. 
video guides how to work with printer on different materials will be released on the channel. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, please hit the like button, subscribe and link the channel. See you next time.